So Jamie Lannister ate my crickets. Let me tell you the story. A Jamie Lannister, for those of you who don't know or maybe are not Game of Thrones fans, which if you're not a Game of Thrones fan, you are truly missing out. Minus the last season, we don't know what happened there. But the rest of the series is absolutely fantastic, and if you haven't watched it, please go watch it. That being said, just know it's kind of violent. There's kind of inappropriate things, adult themes one might say. So watch at your own risk if you are of the younger years. Anywho, back to Jamie Lannister eating my crickets. By Jamie Lannister, I mean Nikolai. And by Nikolai, I mean Nikolai, double barrel last name that I can never remember nor pronounce, the actor who plays Jamie Lannister. He ate my crickets. I still can't believe it, and I'm like three weeks removed from it. So how did this happen? What a story. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, I was part of the organizing team at the Future of Food at South by Southwest. So the Future of Food was a, a South by Southwest event. This was our inaugural, inaugural year of being an actual part of South by Southwest. So it was a whole bunch of different panels and activations and just really, really cool things centered around food and food systems. Um, as we start to move forward and look at what all of our food systems are going to look like in the future So I was part of that organizing team fantastic team full of awesome people Super super excited that I got to be part of the event and super glad that I got to be part of that group What does any of that have to do with the Kingslayer eating my crickets? It has everything to do with it The event had a lot of different moving parts. We had a lot of different panels. We had a lot of different partners There were quite a few people like I knew of quite a few people that I didn't each of us had very different roles on the team we had two main days so the 12th and the 18th were our full future of food days and I was running the bug booth at both of those that was my main role and then I also uh, was a badge holder so I got to attend all of the other various panels that we had that were associated with South by Southwest I helped support social media I helped support wherever I was needed that's where I went so I actually ended up driving down to Austin for those of you who don't know my mom is actually from Texas so my grandparents live in North Texas we go down there fairly often try to go at least once a year probably should go more I'm working on it so for me getting down to South by Southwest like I had a place that I could stop that made it not a 13 hour drive, but it I could split it sort of into two. So I drove down and I didn't drive my car. And the reason I didn't drive my car is my car does not have cruise control. So an 11 hour drive to my grandparents and then an additional three hour drive down to Austin with no cruise control did not sound like a good time to me. So I took Willie's car. Both of our cars have like 200,000 miles on them. Both of our cars uh, are work cars. They are fairly dirty, although I will say, actually I don't know that that's true anymore. I was going to say the interior of mine is not as dirty as his. Actually, no, it's really not as dirty as his is. And we have very different opinions on like what constitutes a clean car and what doesn't. But I digress. That will become important eventually, just for context. It was not in my car, I was in his. So I drove myself from my grandparents to Austin to help with the future of food at South by Southwest. And we are on like day three or four. I am in between panels and I get a text from one of our other team members who I call her our problem solving fairy because that is what she is. If there is a problem, she solves it. She is just the queen of managing chaos. Iffy, you're amazing anyways so if he texts me and says hey how many seats do you have in your car I think about it for a second because I have laid my seats down because I brought a whole bunch of crickets obviously because I can't go anywhere without crickets I had all my luggage all of those things so I had the back seats laid down so Willie drives a really sweet uh, white Toyota Matrix I believe it's a 2010 I will probably insert a picture so that you can see it although I can't remember if I have a picture 2010 Toyota Matrix it's missing two hubcaps it's dirty on the inside all of the things it's a hatchback anyway so I had the seats laid forward because I had a whole bunch of cargo but if he texts me says how many seats do you have I say well cool I can fold the seats up and I have three in the back and one in the front 
she says great sends me a location hey come here we need you to, to drive a few people to the convention center and when she said we need you to drive a few people I was thinking sweet so like other teammates like we had the dinner event going on for sponsors and partners and things like that at the location I was driving to which was a little bit a ways a ways away from the convention center where most of the action was happening for South by Southwest I figured all right some of the teammates need to go from here to here to get to a panel to be able to film to be able to support whatever whatever you need I'm there so I show up to this restaurant location and if he comes and opens the back door like the door to the back seat and there's a whole bunch of tools like laying in the wheel wells because I was like well it doesn't matter like people can put their feet on the tools it's not gonna hurt the tools whatever I just didn't feel like putting them in the back and she goes oh she looks at him and she goes can I put these in the back and I was like yeah sure I was like but it doesn't really matter like people's feet it those it's it was like a miniature shovel that I don't even know why you have a miniature shovel like the size that it was all of these tools still sitting in the in the the seat well I don't know what you call it floorboard seat well where you stick your feet there were tools there if he put them all in the back she was like it's okay I'm gonna move them and I said sure whatever you want to do great so mind you remember how I said Willie and I do not have the same standards of what a clean interior of a car is uh, the day that I was leaving like that morning I did a quick little vacuum of the front and like wiped off a layer of grime just one layer because there's multiple layer of grime off of like the dashboard and like the area around me where I was gonna be sitting so that I didn't feel like I was getting dirty every time I got in the car like that's how dirty this car was but cool you know I'm just driving teammates what does it matter right so if he puts all the things in the back she doesn't doesn't say anything about she says oh like they'll be ready here in a few minutes just hang out and then um, you're just gonna follow Nathan so Nathan was another guy who showed up with the car you're just gonna follow Nathan to the convention center no big deal I said cool great whatever whatever you need I'm around I can help so I sit there and I'm chatting to one of the other you know organizing team and then people start walking out and not just anybody <laughs> freaking Jamie Lannister and like I said Jamie Lannister Nikolai walks out and I was I did my best to keep my cool and keep my face straight and everything but I immediately interior like inside start panicking and going I have the dirtiest car in the world like my boyfriend's a landscaper and I'm a farmer we have working cars like I don't Ugh, crap is Jamie Lannister gonna be sitting in my dirty like completely dirty car am I driving him like what is happening Jamie Lannister was coming to ride in my dirty car <laughs> Nathan gets the other group of people the other group of the partners that we work with I knew who they were like it wouldn't have been so stressful for me to have them come sit in my dirty back seat but no Jamie Lannister proceeds to uh, walk towards my car and the first thing I say is oh this is gonna be a really authentic Iowa experience like don't mind the dirt like my boyfriend's a landscaper it's his car and I'm a farmer so sorry about the dirt <laughs> it was uh, it was Nikolai and two other guys and they just were pretty chill about it they just got in and were like oh no problem whatever and then naturally they say oh you're a farmer like what kind and then you can imagine where that conversation goes so it probably took with traffic like 15 or 20 minutes to get from where we were to the convention center where these guys were going to be on a panel and um, for those like entire 20 minutes they were asking me about cricket farming they were telling me about where they're from in case you're wondering he's from a little village in Denmark of like 40 people it's completely a farming village and he says he gets really sad every time he goes back because what used to be a whole bunch of little farms is now uh, the largest hog farm in northern Europe I believe um, is is his far his hometown but we talked about you know the conflict of what what that farming community faced and how people get mad but at the same time people don't want to pay you know 
six, seven dollars for chicken, but that's the economics that it would take for all of these little small farms. And so they had to, you know, they had to cooperate, work together, become a conglomerate or die essentially. So super nice guy, uh, asked me all about the crickets, asked me all about a whole bunch of different things. So anyways, we get to the convention center and we go in the VIP entrance because obviously we go in the VIP entrance, which literally meant like we go through the gate in the back where they like load the things in and then we physically drove underneath into the building to an elevator where they literally get in and go up to the floor they're supposed to be on for their panel. It was the most bizarre thing that I've ever done. But, so we get there, we stop and all three of them go, can we have some crickets? Uh, can we have your card? Like, can we email you? And I'm like, yes. This entire time, like, I can see him in the rear view mirror. Like, he's, he's a very attractive man. Uh, I can see him in the rear view mirror the whole time I'm driving. I'm being a safe driver and making sure my eyes are hitting all of my mirrors. I only missed one turn, but we figured it out. It was fine. So they go, can you know, can we have some crickets? Can we have your card? Can we email you? Obviously, I'm like, yes, take all of it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I got a hug, but I can't remember. I kind of blacked out some of this, honestly, because it was just, I was not what I was expecting. It was not who I was expecting to be driving. So, send them on the way with bags of crickets, with cricket bars, like under all of the tools that got put in the back. I knew I had boxes of crickets in there. They weren't super organized by flavor and stuff. So I gave him maple chipotle, which for those of you who have not tried my maple chipotle flavor, it's a little bit spicy. So, and I did not warn them of that. And then I also believe I gave them apple cinnamon and maybe chocolate mocha bars to go with it. I did not have any stickers like handy, otherwise I totally would have given them to them because that would have been great to have the IA to Cricket stickers. I did not get a picture with him. I was trying to control my fangirl as best as possible and pretend like I didn't know who he was. Just, you know, treat him like a human because I feel like that was probably appreciated. But, so I did not end up getting a picture. Like I said, I think I got a hug, but that might be a false memory. I don't really remember. I could have hallucinated that and or dreamt it could have happened who knows but so give them the crickets they get on the elevator I drive out from underneath the building and we park in the VIP because we think that we're gonna be taking them like to the airport after the panel get a text maybe half an hour later that they don't need us to give the rides like they are they're gonna do it themselves cool no problem iffy at that point when the organizer on the other for them for that group that was on that panel when that organizer texted her and said hey we don't need the car she was like uh oh like is everything okay and he texted her back and was like no they they absolutely loved their driver sorry we didn't get her name or sorry he the guy who was the chaos coordinator on their side sorry I didn't get her name but they absolutely love their driver could not stop talking about her the entire time so that was pretty cool and then and then I get tagged on Instagram by Nikolai, who has 2.9 million followers. Like I said, totally forgot, did not warn them that maple chipotle is spicy. So that actually is what it was on the, the coughing thing. But he ended up, I messaged him and said, thank you so much for doing this. And he said, no problem at all. Uh, he said, it's gonna take me a little bit of time to you know, get used to the whole cricket. He said, but I really like your bars. That's how Jamie Lannister ate my crickets at South by Southwest. It's a weird and wonderful place. It was a completely unexpected experience. It was very, very cool. I'm mildly bummed that I didn't get a photo with him, but at the same time, I ended up with a really cool story, so it was totally worth it. Just goes to show, always have crickets with you because you never know who's gonna wanna try them. Jamie Lannister, what a man.
thanks so much for watching uh please drop any questions or comments below hit that subscribe button like share all of the things appreciate you